started? I think we should be on YouTube right now. Hang on, I need to do East Scribe. And I think we're ready. Perfect. Perfect. So we'll call our public art meeting to order um, for those at, um, who would like to attend by phone. We have the phone numbers on the agenda, um, along with the webinar ID and the password. Um, I'd like to remind everyone that if you do want to participate, please just press star nine um, to raise your hand and then you'll be recognized. Um, and we also want to remind you to click your unmute button to participate. Um, we have the agenda up on the um, sharing and so everyone can see that. Um, so what I'd like to do is um, get started and first of all introduce Ben Weiss who's the, and Ben help me on your official title, I've always known you as the Bicycle Pedestrian Coordinator and director. So um, if I've misspoken there, please correct me. And no, that works. They've lumped a couple others on since then, but yeah, that works. <laughs> so Ben is here to talk about a project that they are working, um, he's working on um, in regards to Third and Myrtle. It's an exciting project and he'd like to have the Public Art Committee support of that project. Yeah, thanks. Ben. Um, well, I guess I'll just go ahead and get started. So um, basically, I'll try and keep the intro brief, but um, some of the business owners approached the city uh, right by Third and Myrtle there, um, expressing some safety concerns about pedestrian activity, crossing the street uh, between parked cars, um, near Bernice's and Meadow Suite there, uh, close calls, things like that. And so when we looked into it, we realized that uh, federal, state, and local law all prohibit parking within 20 feet of any crosswalk, uh, and all intersections are crosswalks, regardless of whether or not they're striped. And so when those businesses brought that to our attention, we then had to do something about it, uh, which means that all most of that parking in front of Bernice's and all of the parking in front of Meadow Suite is illegal. Um, and so, we didn't want to just go in and remove the parking because we didn't think that that would actually solve the issue. Uh, it would just kind of widen out the area and open it up and potentially make it much faster. And if we didn't have any, uh, any way to replace that, then, uh, then we didn't think that we'd be actually solving the issue. So with the help of a, uh, a third street neighbor, um, we wrote a grant through the AARP, the American Association of Retired Persons, to uh, do some art at the, um, at the intersection. So I'm gonna, can I share my screen? No, I guess I can't. Marty, is that something I'm allowed to do? You would need to be made a co-host. Okay. You don't have to be a co-host. You should be able to as a panelist, but you don't have that option. No, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Now? Well, let's see. Yeah, now I can do it. Great. Okay, is everyone seeing this? So this is a map of the existing conditions. Uh, this is Bernice's right here. Here's Meadow Suite. Here's, uh, oh, I'm forgetting the name of the salon and then Zen Medicine and Good Medicine there and uh, Flippers is here and uh, there's a church here and uh, the um, Noteworthy is in this area. And so basically here's where a crosswalk is by state law here and here. And so through the T and then 20 feet on either side of that, you can't have parking. And so we did a, a kind of just proposed design um, that we applied for the grant uh, and just did a mock-up um, of this and uh, we were awarded the grant. And so now we have until June 30th to get this done. 
We've been working with the property owners and with the uh, business owners on this. And while they're a little bummed to lose the parking spaces, they do agree that it's a great opportunity to improve safety and uh, create a sense of place and a really kind of wonderful environment to attract people and, and have them stay longer and, and hang out. And so the idea is that we would add some bike parking, create a little parklet area and uh, be able to use um, pavement markings, colorful pavement markings to help uh, create the sense of place there. And so we just did a rough sketch with some random colors uh, for our grant application, but we wanted to do an open call through the public art committee to hire local artists to actually create something um, that would go in these locations here. And so uh, I guess that I met with Paisley and with Kathy uh, last week, two weeks ago to talk about what that timeline could look like and what that process could look like. And um, basically what we're hoping for is uh, an enthusiastic vote of support from the Public Arts Commission and then a release uh, for that open call uh, as soon as possible. I'm, I'm still waiting to see a, uh, an example public art call so that I can make one up uh, for this, but then, um, and then get that released as soon as possible. Uh, our plan would be to call for uh, artist portfolios. We would gather some of the stakeholders, meaning the adjacent property and business owners together, uh, pick three to five artists that we think could do it, and then have them do uh, a mock-up and, and then choose the one that, um, that we like the best. Uh, and so we'd be able to, there's some money in the grant to be able to pay artists for this. And so we'd be able to pay uh, both the finalists and then a kind of larger award to the, to the person who was selected. Um, and our timeline's a little tight on getting this turned around, but there's a whole bunch of moving parts as well. Uh, our streets division is gonna come in and repair asphalt. Uh, the water, uh, city water is going to do a, a small main extension so that they don't rip up any of this work in the future. Uh, we're really kind of coordinating throughout public works to make sure that what we put in place uh, lasts there for, for quite a while. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of the, the quick and dirty of it. I'm happy to answer any questions that people might have uh, if there's, you know, more, more concerns or, or questions. Uh, James, uh, helped with some of this concept as well. Um, and so, uh, yeah, he might be able to answer questions also. So Ben, can you tell us how much um, money, et cetera, would be available to artists, um, both in that um, preliminary award to finalists, as well as an ultimate award to an artist? Yeah, what we were thinking was that, that we would be able to offer um, $100 to potentially up to five finalists and then presumably $1,000 to the person who was selected. And the artist would just be doing a design. They would not be actually installing this on the ground. This would be uh, the material is uh, it's called Premark uh, Thermoplastic. It's a sheet. It comes in a sheet and it's a few millimeters thick and you lay it out on the ground and then you melt it into the asphalt with like a, a walk behind like a lawnmower that has a UV, a high powered UV light on it that melts it into the asphalt. And so that would, that would happen through uh, streets staff would be doing that. It wouldn't be the artist doing that part. And so in essence, what you would like the public art committee to do is help you on the art call, um, provide that basic call and then have you fill in the guts and then help with the selection of the artwork along with the neighborhoods and those other folks that have been involved and businesses, the other folks that have been, been involved in the process? Yeah, that would be the hope. Um, so I see Greg's think? hand up. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Greg. That's fine. Um, now I have two hands up. Uh, oh, now I have two hands up. <laughs> been so long since I've seen you, Ben. Um, what a great face to see um, over a computer screen. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Glad you're doing well and staying productive. So this is my first rodeo with this committee. Um, so I just have a, just a few simple questions, but um, is, is part of your imagination of what you're seeing here something that is 
um, going to be low profile. So it's like, it, it keeps the safety concerns down. Cause I think the biggest concern is cars when you, you can't see past whatever, you know, five feet or something like that. So is this, is this a, a like a low profile kind of um, approach? Is that the message you're going to send out to your artists and your, um, in your ask or like what do you, yeah, what do you not, I should have maybe been a little more clear we're really we're talking about strictly pavement markings and a little bit of um a little bit of maybe some some bollard sticking up so are you seeing my screen here yeah here's okay. an example of like a bulb out at an intersection where this is paint or this is that material that I was talking about this this pre-mark and then some some plastic bollards but it were really um, you know, that's a creative one. Uh, here's a neat one um, in Seattle. So yeah, we're talking about uh, two dimensional art. We're not talking about sculpture. Great, thank you. It's, it's great. I, I, this is my neighborhood and I, I got hit in this intersection on my bike by a truck. <laughs> so I can speak to experience of the danger of that intersection for sure. Also, as a driver, I've just had so many um, moments of like, you just can't really see anything around those corners. So this is great. I'm really glad that you're uh, diving into this initiative and um, couldn't be in better hands. Thanks, Greg. I also think it's exciting. Oh, sorry, um, Heidi. I, I think it was me, Kathy. I jumped in and just, just oh. saying this sounds great and uh, let me know how I can help. Ah, great, thanks, Tony. Heidi, you have your hand up? Yeah, I just was wondering on, on like what sort of a format you need the final like rendering to be in. Like, are you looking for a digital file or like a... a that's that's a good question. I guess that's kind of what I was hoping the, the art committee might be able to help with is um, we're working with the manufacturer of the material to figure out what would be best for them. I know there are some specs like uh, line width can't be narrower than four inches uh, to because of the brittleness of the material. Um, and so things like that, We there's going to be some specs. There's also like a color palette that I have that uh, that I would include with that. Um, I imagine that we could uh, vary from that, but it would be more costly and, and probably more challenging. And so I'd, I'd like to stick with, with the color palette. And um, there's specs like that, but in terms of what we get, I'm pretty sure that if we just have dimensions, you know, a digital file that uh, meets the dimensions, we'd be able to give that to the manufacturer and, um, and that they'd be able to put it together. And my understanding is that they, uh, it either comes in a sheet that they would roll out or it comes stacked and like the pieces are numbered and then we'd lay them out. And so I would expect that whoever the, the chosen artist is would want to be involved like at the time of installation, but we, there would be no expectation that they know how to actually do the installation. They would just be there to say, yes, this is the order of things and this looks like what mm -hmm. my artwork uh, what, you know, this is how I intended it to look. And that's very typical too of what we've done in the past, Ben, as far as if artists are doing the design, they get to participate by saying, yeah, this is really what my work is supposed to be when it actually is implemented. Um, and this is a little bit of my sign, well, a lot of my sign background, but um, they probably can take a general image file and then turn it into a vector file, which a line file, and then create the design accordingly from that. So it's amazing what they can do. Um, and for the artists, um, we talked about using submittable um, and working with Ben on, and having artists submit their designs on submittable um, because many of the artists are now getting used to that and understand how to provide the basic information and then could attach uh, their digital imagery, either their drawings or whatever in the appropriate format. So, Greg. This may be my most vocal meeting out of all of the rest to follow the future, who knows? I, no, um, we love it. <laughs> ben, are you, are you imagining that you're looking for a single artist for all 
corners or are you looking for a mashup or like what, what, um, what, what's kind of your goal there? You know, I had considered one artist for all four, uh, but as soon as you ask the question, I don't see why that would have to be the case. And I think that potentially there could be uh, choices. I, you know, I don't have grant money to pay everyone a thousand dollars, but uh, we could certainly entertain the idea of that being multiple artists. There's just that issue of cohesion and consistency versus, um, you know, um, I, I, I love randomness, but um, to give to give one person the whole space is pretty cool. Um, but if I don't know if you wanted to establish like a theme or something like that, or if that's any if, that, if you've thought about that at all, so. So different you know, artists. I don't, sort of I don't have the theme, yellow. but I know that the property owners and business owners really like the idea of bringing in the character of their neighborhood somehow and tying that to what gets selected. And, um, you know, it's one of the older neighborhoods in Missoula. There's uh, the businesses have been there for a while. The architecture is, is pretty cool. Even the newer buildings that are designed to look old uh, are pretty neat. So I, I don't know what that theme exactly is, but I, I think that someone could come up with a rendering that um, that would be unifying. Everybody, I have to apologize. I'm taking minutes um, for Paisley and I'm trying to put my microphone on mute so you don't hear me typing, but <laughs> I apologize if it's too loud. Um, in, in regards to the uh, uh, multiple artists, maybe there'd be the option to, to put um, you know, open to, to, you know, pairs of artists or teams of artists to invite, you know, multiple participants, but then they would take it in kind of a coordinated way. Um, could be one way to, to invite multiple uh, hands at, at play. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. What is the, how upfront do we have to be about that in the call or those decisions that we can make when we see the portfolios that come in? Um, typically we try to be as upfront as possible in the call to give artists as much time to prepare and to um, come up with their idea, um, especially if we are looking for a cohesive group um, or a cohesion in, in all four corners. Um, we try to give them as much information as we can. Greg, and then Heidi, and then James. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I keep forgetting to lower my hand. Oh, sorry. Oh. Hi, Heidi, and then James. So I'm still stuck on the uh, submittal process. Um, so is, uh, Ben, would you give like a two-scale template that or, or would that be the second round? I guess, because you were describing a two round process. So the first round would just be artists submitting portfolios of their work um, and you would pick, or, or the, the committee, whoever would pick the top four. And at that point, would you give like a two scale rendering that they should design to? I think that we'd probably provide it in the beginning just to make okay. sure that they were um, that they knew what they were getting into size wise and uh, kind of yeah what the limits of the medium are and so that they know if they were a good you know if they wanted to submit so we try and be as specific about what uh, what was required at the very first call. That makes sense. Okay. James, sorry. <laughs> uh, yes. Hey, everybody. Hey, Ben. I would um, I would like to just ask whether or not additional funding for this art call could one bring more artists to the table or raise a more handsome reward for the participants and the artists, and also just specifically for you, Ben, if um, it seems like the funding and the grants and the city partnership and everything that has gone into this project is kind of a, a it's like a stars alignment that 
has made this project even possible from a fundraising standpoint. So I'm wondering for projects similar to this in the future, if this could be used as a pilot for future programs, if there was a type of a uh, number or um, method that the public art committee could advocate for, for more of this. I'll start with uh, the, the question of whether or not this can be a pilot. We really hope it is. Um, and that was part of the grant application to the AARP. Uh, we said that we want this to be a pilot for other locations. And Heidi and James have heard my presentation um, about the neighborhood traffic management program, but it's basically a new uh, or a revamping of our traffic calming program as a way to do some lower cost uh, initiatives in some of our underserved neighborhoods um, around traffic calming. And basically uh, the city is expecting to be um, creating these spaces, even if there isn't art within them, uh, creating these spaces uh, with just the bulb outs and the lines going around the corners um, in the not too distant future. And so we would love it if there was another funding source that could uh, that could partner with artists and actually bring those spaces alive. We, we don't have that money in public works. Um, but if that if there were other funding sources, it's something that we would certainly encourage um, because it will just help uh, make the projects more successful if the neighborhoods take ownership of them and, um, and really have an aesthetic appeal to the, uh, to these traffic calming projects. You know, what we've found too, Ben, is that once, if we do have, um, one of these projects that serves as a model, it, it makes it easier to do some of that fundraising in the future. Um, either through neighborhood businesses, um, neighborhood grant program, or just um, individuals who live in that neighborhood. Um, you know, we've, we've had those types of things happen with the signal boxes. We've had private donations um, and neighborhood donations just to get that, those projects done. So if this is a project that the committee would like to see moving forward, which it seems very exciting, it seems like it's an opportunity for a variety of artists to become involved, that it would be really exciting to see it and to work with the neighborhoods as the project progresses. Anybody have any comments on that? Hey, um, well, Ben, I have a question for you. It sounds like you're you're talking obviously with um, the right folks in the city as far as what what these structures will end up kind of looking like. There must be some some format to that. Is that is that something that you are able to pass off to the artist for that, or 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 is there room for if someone had you know a maybe a a different shape? that wasn't teardrop or something like that. Um, where, where does that, where do we lie there? Do you have any idea or have you had that conversation? There's certainly a little bit of flexibility. Um, you, you, we, we veer into uh, running afoul of design guidelines for what you put in a roadway if you get too artistic with anything. Um, and, uh, but one of the benefits of doing these on, on solely local streets. If we don't have to involve the Department of Transportation, then we can likely do kind of what we want. Um, there's certainly some room for experimentation. The other thing is there's just some natural, um, there's natural fluctuation because not all of our streets are the same. Even when they're the same width, the curb radius is a slightly different angle. And so the bend around that corner is gonna look a little bit different from intersection to intersection. And so every one of those will be, will inevitably be unique, even if it's the same general shape. But then within those shapes, there's certainly some, uh, there's some potential room for, uh, for creativity. Uh, the sky's not the limit, but um, <laughs> there's certainly some room for discussion. And the other thing, so in this instance, we're doing bulb outs at the corners. The other way that we are, uh, the other approach that we're using is creating circles. And Greg, I know there's one near your home um, that's more permanent with a uh, like concrete and a tree in the middle of it. So those are great, but they're expensive, especially now that um, the uh, accessibility guidelines have 
uh, decided that if you're doing intersection work, then you need to bring all four corners up to ADA standards. And so each one of those circles now uh, costs in the neighborhood of $20,000. Um, and so instead, what we are trying to do is do circles out of paint as well and signs so that we're, if we're not actually tearing up asphalt, then uh, we don't have to meet those accessibility uh, guidelines. Now, I, I don't like being at a public meeting saying that we're skirting accessibility and we're doing everything we can to uh, make the city as fully accessible as possible, but we have a plan uh, a, a kind of data-driven approach that we're doing that. And the places that we need to make accessibility improvements aren't always the places that we need to make um, quicker safety improvements for traffic. And so um, the, the goal is that we will do uh, these kind of lighter, quicker, cheaper traffic calming solutions. And then when we come through with a full sidewalk project, we'll uh, give the neighborhoods the opportunity to make those permanent. Um, all that's to say is that circles, you know, like the middle of an intersection is another potential canvas for, uh, for public art. Mm -hmm. Well, we love integrating public art in some non-traditional aspects of our community life. So this, this it's an exciting project. So may, um, does anyone have any other discussion? Um, and then in order to move forward, what we would need is a motion from the committee to work with Ben and his committee on this project, um, pardon me, and help with the art call and help with the selection committee and where we and other areas that we as, as the public art committee can help on this initial project. Would anyone like to make a motion similar to that? <laughs> I'll make a motion. Oh, <laughs> Joe, great. Um, do you want to state a motion for the record? <laughs> do we need a second? So um, essentially then you're just restating my motion, Joe, or not my motion, my, my suggestion, or do you want to restate a motion? I will make a motion that we work together with Ben as a committee to help with all of that. Thanks, Joe. Oh, can I can I second? Yes, Greg, you can hey, second. Hey. That feels um, so great. Thanks. Perfect. <laughs> um, so we have a motion that the Public Art Committee um, work with Ben and his committee on development for the third and Myrtle project um, with the art call and processes through that art call to include the selection committee. Seconded by Greg, any more discussion? All in favor? Um, we take our, can we unmute ourselves and say aye or <laughs> all in favor, raise your hands. Aye. Opposed? Um, motion carried. Um, ben, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for explaining the project. Yeah, no problem. Kathy, um, you were going to send me an example public art call so that I can start populating one with uh, the relevant information for this. I will I do that. If you could send that over. I'd I'll love send to get you a, this. a few, a couple of them that we have. Perfect. We can get this out as soon as possible because like I said, we are kind of on a crunch timeline for this. Perfecto. All right, great. Thank you great. very much. Thank you so much, Ben. Appreciate it. Have a great Thanks. afternoon, everybody. Thanks, all. Um, hey, Kathy. Oh, this is Marty. I just wanted to raise a point of order. I noticed that we don't have any public comment on the agenda, but that's a requirement of law. So at some point during the meeting, would you please call for public comment on items that are not on the agenda? Oh, Thank you. Absolutely. I will call for public comment now. I did not notice that that's normally on our agenda. I don't know how it got. Oh, well, we will call for it. Um, and I would like to call for public comment now. There being none, we will continue. Um, you will notice that I've learned from last month. I will not forget the approval of the minutes. So did everyone get a chance? to read the February minutes and see if there was anything you wanted to make changes or, 
or alterations. May then I have a motion to accept the February minutes. I'll make a motion that we accept. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Yeah, Kathy. A second. Someone. I'll second. Thanks, James. <laughs> um, it's been moved that we approve the February minutes. All in favor, raise your hand. Perfect. Aye. And opposed? Great. Motion carried. Minutes are accept accepted. Um, the next item on our agenda is the budget. And I did, I mentioned last month that I had contacted Lee Griffin about our budget. We have, um, just a little background, we have not seen our budget or a budget in months. Um, and so I had said, told the committee last month that I would work on that. I did get a city breakdown of where they see our monies right now. Um, and actually there's there's some discrepancies. We, um, we, they haven't recorded, we received a grant from the neighborhood projects last year to work with the parks department on imagery for the electric box at um, Playfair, Playfair Park. Um, that I did not see in this, um, so, I'm going to say right now we have between $4,500 and $8,500. Um, Lee Griffin is out of town until the 22nd. So what I'd like to do is have her um, take a look at this and see if they've, if that money ended up in some other category that I'm not seeing. And then what I'd like to do is as soon as she does that, she'll be back on the 22nd send everyone the budget so that you actually have a hard copy of it. Um, what, I, what I was trying to talk to her about is just really making it as simple um, as possible for all of us just to look at. For example, if we had um, last year on signal boxes alone, we had $6,000 in grants. And so what I, it would really be nice if we just said, okay, project traffic signal boxes, um, income, $6,000, expenses, $6,000, and just who the money was paid to. Um, for example, the Mountain Line Project, um, if that money were to come into our account, income, $5,000, expenditure, $5,000, and then have a separate administrative line item. Because now the what we, she sent me was line items no delineation um, other than the checks to the artists for the signal boxes as to where money came in and went. Um, and part of that is it, it's just not what her printout says. So I had sent her one from a few years ago that um, and pre her that had been provided to us. So I was just hoping that she might give us a clearer budget and she actually liked that idea but she's out of town until the 22nd. So I really won't have a specific update until sometime after the 22nd. But I would, I do think um, moving forward, even if we have something minimally on a quarterly basis, so we can track where we have donations coming in, grants coming in, um, anything on our budget, as well as those expenditures going out, that would be really great for us. Because very often we have requests even for small amounts of money and because we don't have we haven't had anything in writing on where our money is it's very difficult to say okay yeah we can do that or no we can't do that so are, are we all okay with that with me still moving forward and working on these things good perfect um i will have something to all of you after the 22nd um yeah. Kathy, can I ask a question? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, do we, do we, you know about, so I remember Courtney was working for a long time on um, potential income that was coming in from the build project with the, what was it with, with the PD or 
Um, has there been any follow up with that? With what Courtney had told me, and then I also asked Lee to follow up on that too. There was money that was, there was some parks money that is yet to come in. Um, and, and Heidi, help out here. There was the police department. And when it was before part, um, Courtney resigned, um, she had mentioned that the police department money was a remodel. And consequently, we did not get percent for art for that. Heidi, can you help elaborate on that? I'm not remembering all of the facts from what she had said. I don't know about the police department. I think the only one that I'm aware of is the West Side Park will have a percent for art. Okay. And phase um, one is almost done and that one didn't cost a whole lot. I think it's um, the total construction costs for that was, were uh, 240,000. And if we get one and a half, percent or you know it's the, not going to be substantial until phase two is complete so the total project is like two million so well stoney i will check on that i'll call courtney again um because remember she, i you all probably remember she was working on that for months and months and months and could not did not get an answer so yeah right and you know, I guess I wonder about as we think about strategic planning and uh, kind of doing some of that work, like it's it's a little hard. I mean, it's a little hard to do much without a budget, um, which is about what we have right now. Um, mm -hmm. And so I guess my question is, is how can we get creative and what are the options? I mean, to me, it seems like the percent for art circumstance that we have right now isn't it doesn't reflect this our city's mission to have art as a forefront of how we present and how we celebrate our community. And so anyways, just encouraging us to schedule time for that dialogue. Mm -hmm. No, that's, um, I will make a note um, in, so when we do our annual meeting that that be a major part of our, dis or a good part of our discussion. I don't wanna say major, but a part of the discussion on, um, yeah. you know, sources of funding, but funding beyond the percent for art. Be if we are gonna um, be an ongoing and be able to, you know, do those things that we had talked about in the past, about being able to provide money to artists and programs, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a great idea. New members and temporary chair still here until one of those new members steps up. <laughs> um, Thanks, Kathy. James, intro James, in yeah, James introduced himself last month, but Greg, how about if you take a few minutes now and let tell everybody about yourself? We're really excited to have you on board. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's really a great honor to be here with you guys on this committee and. I look forward, forward to seeing what else we might end up uh, running into along our path. I'm a professor at the university. My, my world is primarily digital, um, yet long ingrained in physical and analog art as well. Um, currently, my, my art life is motion graphics, animation, and um, digital design. Um, Yet I got to throw pots a couple of weeks ago, again, after a long hiatus of that. And it was fantastic. Um, so I'm in the school of uh, visual and media arts and um, uh, we were just the school of media arts and then the school of art, we combined and uh, we're, we're in the process of making something more wonderful and fantastic. Um, I, uh, I am a father of three and three dogs as well. Um, I live in the River uh, River Street neighborhood um, off of Orange Street. Um, I love I love Missoula so much, and um, and I think that one of the strongest aspects of what we have here is our celebration of of arts and culture. So it's really great to be a representative of that here. Anything Greg, else? <laughs> anything? Anybody want to ask Greg some questions? <laughs> no, it's it's. We're really looking forward to have both 
having both you and James Welcome. participate. Great. Thank you. Yeah, very cool. Danny, would you, we've got the Indigenous Mural Project. Would you like to talk about that a bit? Lisa did send out an email. I don't know if all of you saw that, but maybe Danny can give a quick re recap. Um, yeah, uh, the only update I have is that there is no update. Um, uh, yeah, so um, kind of what to what Lisa said, um, I think, you know, it just kind of got buried. Um, in all of the other things that are going on over there on the Higgins um, Bridge. So um, yeah, uh, hopefully um, they'll give us an update, but for now it's just like playing the waiting game. Um, so yeah, oh, and just to give like a little bit of background for the new members. So um, we were um, kind of hoping, I don't know, if that's the right word, um, proposing an idea. Um, so there, um, there's like this down the substation. Is that what it's called? Um, it's just like all those like wires down there um, where they have the Clark Clark Fork um, Farmers Market. There's yeah, like there's like a fence around it, and so um, yeah. Um, apparently, Northwest Energy is um, kind of cleaning that up in um different areas and so um and so that that was happening but then also um there we I've just been having conversations about like oh there needs to be more indigenous art around here so that those con that conversation kind of came at the same time as this other thing was happening and so we just kind of put them together and um you know propose this idea to Northwest Energy and all of the other organizations that are involved in downtown Missoula. I forget the names because there's like a lot. Um, and so, um, yeah, our um, proposal was that, you know, there would be like a wall kind of built around that substation and um, each there would be like some panels uh, and um, each panel would have um, art from a different tribal nation in the state of Montana. Um, that's a really bad, uh, description of it. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, so that's kind of, so that project is just kind of like, uh, a little on the back burner right now. But hopefully not lost and gone forever. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. Um, because yeah, I am still, um, still here advocating for, art that represents um, the first people here. Um, this, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, especially here in Missoula, this land was forcefully taken from the Salish people and there's no representation of the rightful stewards of this land, so. Danny, did you resonate at all with Ben's proposal about that, that crosswalk area? And are you, do you see an opportunity for us to try to encourage um, a more appropriate angle for for that answer there um yeah I mean I I wrote down all this stuff and I was actually gonna share it out um so I've I've been kind of working on this like database um of just like indigenous artists across the state um and just like putting out all of these different art calls and different um art opportunities um that hopefully they they might apply for um but uh, yeah, so looking forward to the the art call when it comes out because I I will definitely be sharing it. Um, yeah, I think um, uh, yeah, it's like a super cool opportunity. I um, a great opportunity. Um, yeah, I mean every time um, every time we have a guest, you know, people talk about their um, you know proposed projects, and I'm just like, wow, I never even thought of like art being. Um, used in that way so um, yeah uh, I had to look up what pre therm what thermoplastic was because I'm like that's new <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, yeah I know that sticks to streets <laughs> like giant printer paper right that's yeah I'm like yeah. that's so cool I'm like can we just do that on a whole street um, I don't know 
I mean, not here, but I'm just like back home. I'm so I'm from up in north central uh, Montana from small a small reservation called Rocky Boy, and like, can we just like paint on this street using thermoplastic? It's a thing. I looked. I looked into. You could. It. You actually. <laughs> you really could. Maybe we could have a collaborative project. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, thanks, Danny. That um, thanks for your update. Um, Dennis, would you like to give a brief overview of Dash and any updated information? Uh, yeah, I uh, I emailed before the last meeting. I emailed him, and uh, he emailed back and said that he couldn't come until probably in April, sometime, probably the first of April. So I think that if that works out with you, Kathy, um, we could do that. Um, and he was working on another big project. I did email uh, everybody images of, of his work and of the sculptures. And if you haven't received that yet, then I will, I will email you some pictures of his work. And uh, so, um, so we're just kind of in a waiting, uh, stage here on that. Um, in the meantime, uh, perhaps, uh, we could kind of look around the city and see what, what we thought might, what, uh, his sculpture might fit in a particular place, um, but I know we'll get a lot of feedback from him once he comes here uh, about where he would like to uh, have the sculpture and whether it would be uh, outdoors or indoors or um, uh, that type of thing. Uh, I, the materials of the glass, uh, I don't think the weather um, that he is using, the weather would not... Uh, affect that if it was outdoors, um, if it has to be covered or um, any particular uh, things that way. Um, he was gonna send a sketch and as soon as I get that, I'll send that out on the email. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I've heard right now. And I'll, uh, I'm sure I'll be hearing back from him soon. Just a real quick overview, and James, I think you heard about this last month, but um, Greg, DASH is an organization that funds artists, um, and in this situation, they got to choose a site in the country where they would want to work, and um, help me with Mike's last name, Dennis. Um, anyway, he chose Missoula, Montana, and he is an artist that works in glass and reflection and does some pretty interesting things, so essentially we um, the committee voted to work with him and we will be receiving a work um, created by this artist completely funded by the organization dash oh well, that's really fantastic it's <laughs> very cool yeah that's cool yeah, um, and, and we thought if we started a relationship with them then maybe we could help artists in missoula participate in that organization and and you know, for those people that want to do public art, either here or somewhere else in the country. So That's we thought great. it would be a good stepping stone and a good relationship for us to build. And and what I understand is that there's there's not a predetermined space for this yet. That's what mm -mm. that's what we're looking at here. Correct. Yeah. And Dennis, do you have an idea of scale and scope of this? Uh, we don't yet. Um, you can get kind of an idea from those pictures and. I believe he said Mike Lutzik is his name. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just spaced it. I'm yeah, I I believe uh, didn't he mention that he would be getting fifteen thousand dollars mm -hmm. a day? Yeah. And that's the organization yeah. that would be nice to uh, get involved with. Um, so uh, other than that limitation, I don't know of any other limitations as far as size or anything like that at this yeah. point. It's pretty exciting. I don't, I'm not familiar with any really other glass work around our community. Am I, am I mistaken? 
like in uh, public spaces? Nothing, I mean, you know, the, what we have are the stained glass in the churches and, but nothing, nothing standalone. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Well, wait, there's my sculptures everywhere. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, so it, it yeah, it, it, it just is, it's an exciting project. So, um, you know, as soon as we narrow down when he can come in April, of course, everybody um, will be told and perhaps we can have some sort of gathering. Um, if it's a public gathering, we could, you know, invite the public, put out our notice. And so other individuals could come and meet him. I mean, I, I don't know really what time he has yet, but we'd like to do as much for him and with them as we can. Okay. Cool. Um, our mountain lion mural, number eight on the agenda, um, actually the Missoula Urban Transportation District official mural. Um, the contract has been finalized um, and signed, completely signed. So Stella Nall, who's the artist, um, you know, we put the artwork up on last week, but she will be beginning her work sometime. Um, the checks, she should be receiving her check, her first check in the next few days to a week. And then she'll be able to um, start her work. Um, Greg and James, she's painting the columns at the transfer center or the bus station downtown, those southwesterly columns. Um, and she's very, very cool design. Um, she worked with the Missoula Urban Transportation District, uh, Mountain Lion folks. Um, and, you know, they've always, that group has always been supportive of public art. They came to us and asked for our help. And it was a project that Courtney was spearheading with them. And then I've just taken over here at the end to help with the agreement, but we are good to go. She should be starting that project shortly. And then it will be finished by April, mid-April. And um, hopefully we can help them with the dedication on the project. So a nice, a nice collaborative piece. Um, annual planning meeting. Number nine, now that we are, we have a full membership, um, I, we've had meetings on different days of the week. We've had them in the evenings. We've had them Saturday mornings in the past. We've had them from four to six on a Tuesday or Thursday evening. But um, would it be all right with everyone if I worked with Paisley to send around a calendar um, and people could kind of pick certain days, um, you know, we want to do something in May, now that we are at full membership, um, May, June, before the summer hits, and um, look at where we've been and where we're going, in essence, um, general themes. And, you know, in the past, we've done one to three year plan, looking at um, short term, mid term, long term goals, small projects, large projects. Um, so some, you know, again, keeping in that kind of where, where are we now and where we would like to see the committee go in the future. Um, do we think we could do it in April or May? Does anyone have a preference? Um, also a preference for a weekend or a weeknight. Um, you know, I think we need probably two hours at least. Um, we've had some up to four hours, but I'm not saying we need to do that. Is there a goal to do it in person? Because I think if we want to do it in person, we should wait till May so we can do it outside and it's hopefully warmer. Mm -hmm. Does how does everybody feel? And Heidi, can we do in person meetings? I don't I don't want to get our hands slapped. <laughs> um, I don't. So that's a good question. Um, I don't know what the record. Maybe Marty can answer because I see that smile. <laughs> Televise it. I don't know. Um, so right now, our uh, the city's operating under our COVID plan, and it says that all of our public meetings will be held virtually. Um, and I can tell you that most of the city's meeting rooms are not suited to hybrid meetings. Um, we just don't have the hardware set up in the rooms yet. I'll have a meeting about that tomorrow. Um, so uh, 
Um, and the, the issue with outside um, has been, we've had some issues with citizens complaining that they cannot participate because they are, um, that they were vulnerable and uh, mm -hmm. so they wouldn't be able to attend. In fact, uh, one of those came from a, a city council person. So um, that's that's well, what I, was, I have is we don't we don't know where we're going to be for May yet. Well, Marty, if it's a strategic planning meeting though, instead of a regularly scheduled public meeting, does it? If it's matter? a strategic planning meeting, it's probably the most important meeting to have as a public meeting okay. because mm -hmm. you're planning the strategic direction of your board. It's probably the right. most important work that your board will do. Well, scratch it. Want to do it in some mind. Well, and we have in the past when we've had them, we've always invited the public. Um, again, we don't always get participation, but um, it, yeah, I mean, it, it's lovely to meet in person and have that board up and right on the board and do all of those things, um, which Zoom isn't the best. So um, if we put it off until June, um, how do people feel about that? Are we okay and just kind of seeing in the direction? I mean, we'll all have our shots if we want them by July 4th, but um, do, do we, does anybody have any feeling one way or the other if we had, if we waited till June? I mean, do we have anything pressing until then? I mean, we can, we can probably push off the annual planning meeting till then. That'd mm -hmm. be fun. Yeah, no, nothing pressing. I mean, we've got our project, ongoing projects and, you know, kind of those things that happen every year. I, you know, you just hate to see it get away from us. So um, maybe we'll, Marty can keep us posted. Um, Heidi, you can keep us posted. That'd be great on all those protocols. And then um, maybe shoot for June and hopefully we'll be able to um, maybe have it outdoors. You know, we've had it at um, Stockman Bank up in their meeting room before, which was lovely. And, you know, if we decided to do it outdoors, Bob would probably let us use that balcony area, given that the weather wasn't inclement, or even be in the room adjacent to their balcony and have the doors open or something, I, you know. But, um, and we've also had it at Children's Theater before. So, um, and we've had it at Karis Park and we've had them Eh, different places. So how about, uh, why don't we say we'll shoot for June? Um, how do you all feel about a four to six or 6.30 kind of meeting or a five to seven meeting? Is that, I mean, you think we can set aside two hours? Yeah, as long as we bring food. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if we're in person, that'd be love. We always have. It's kind of been a potluck kind of thing. Um, so... We had also talked about, I think, uh, having a facilitator, right? Did we talk about that last month? Yeah, and which I think would be a great idea. Um, and so everybody can participate. I really, I love that idea. And when we've had facilitators, it's been very um, productive. So, so maybe we should, is there a preferred facilitator that's done this in the past or? Because I mean, um, it might hint a little bit on availability too, if there's somebody specific we're trying to work with. Yeah. Um, you know, Greg or James, if you have ideas of someone who might be a good facilitator, that'd be great. We could check on their schedule. I know we've talked to Tia, Kia, sorry. Um, and I also think if we have a better handle, a really good firm handle on those monies we have, um, I, it, I think it would be interesting for the committee to consider paying someone to facilitate that meeting for a couple hours. So again, everybody's decision on that, but um, it, it, it really is nice when we have someone that can play that role. Yeah, so that would really be great. The last planning meeting we had was a little bit kerfuzzled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it was more like just a talking session, but still productive. So great. So. Um, James or Greg, if you think of anyone, maybe, or if anyone thinks of anyone, let me know and I'll contact them and I'll shoot for June. Um, can, do we prefer early evening or versus a weekend, a Saturday morning or something? But raise your hand for early evening. <laughs> okay, raise your hand for Saturday morning. 
there we go. <laughs> Kathy, so, you had mentioned um, a chance for you and I to maybe catch up in the mm -hmm. next week or so, um, just after my first introduction to the meeting. I think that a conversation would be good just so I kind of have a better grasp of what what you guys are looking for in this um, in this meeting and that might help put things into perspective where I could feel a little more helpful as to offering up a suggestion or two for a facilitator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and one of the things, um, I know you all know that we do this, but on the back of our agenda, we always have our strategic planning goals and these were outdated 2017 to 2019. But it'll give you an idea of some of those things that even were part of the discussions last year, even though they weren't as succinct as these were. So kind of, do we want to look at those same things and what other things might we want to look at? Those same themes. So just as, just as some thoughts. Hey, Kathy, it might also be nice if we can talk Kirsten into dredging up our notes from the last planning meeting. So oh, good idea. We talked about last year. Great, great idea. Perfect. And it okay. seems like it would be nice if we, if we know somebody who has, you know, experience, um, significant experience kind of between working with the city and nonprofits. Um, this committee is a bit of a hybrid uh, circumstance. And so I, I think having somebody who really has a kind of a depth of, of experience or knowledge in both worlds would be pretty helpful for us. Mm -hmm. Great comment. Um, you know, one of the people I was thinking about because he kind of fits into both of those worlds as soon when you said that, Stoney, and also understands public art was um, Peter. I mean, he's been on the committee, he was chair of the committee, but he's involved in all of those other aspects. So I'm not saying one way or another, but um, Peter Lambros um, is who I for those of you who don't know him. Um, you know, we've had Kia, who's been a member, who's um, knowledgeable about those worlds. So, um, but if we can think of anybody else, that that's a great comment, Sony, about, you know, our, our hybrid kind of existence. So, cool. Well, let's think, and we'll tentatively plan for a four-ish, five-ish timeframe um, in June. I have a question. Um, it's yeah, Danny? Kind of unrelated, kind of related. Um, uh -huh. So my term ends in June of this year. Um, and I'm unsure, like, how do I like reapply? Um, oh, the mayor will send you, you'll get a notice from Heidi. Anybody okay. whose term, anytime your term ends, Heidi will send you a notice with the application and then, or and a letter. And you essentially say, if you want to stay on the committee and the mayor will review everything and, or the city council, if you are a council appointee, um, and then um, generally be reappointed. Okay, cool. Um, so you will, you will get a letter. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, uh, the city clerk has that information as well down mm -hmm. at City Hall. Correct. And it's on our website. All of our Everybody's term is on our website, the city website. And um, on we have two websites, Greg and James, and we'll, I'll talk to you about both of those. <laughs> um, Rattlesnake Neighborhood Sound Wall. Again, a um, project that we preliminarily approved on helping with. Um, the Rattlesnake neighborhood wants to put some sort of artwork all along the north side of the sound wall. Um, really, um, they, they, they're they just starting the planning, but Danny, um, they really, one of their ideas that they were very excited about was the um, indigenous history of the valley and I was hoping that you might um, be interested in, at least preliminarily, I know you're very busy, but kind of working with that and helping on it and helping them frame some um, 
a project along with me? Are you there? Oh, <laughs> Danny? Oh, well, I'll talk to her about it. One of their ideas was um, a history of the valley and the Salish um, in the valley along with the history of the area in intermingling. Um, traditional words translated into English. Um, and so we've, they're, they're just, they're, they're really exploring it, but I mean, it's a huge, huge project. If any of you have seen that sound wall at the end of the rattlesnake, I mean, one, they said paint, do a mural on it. And I said, well, do we have a few hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> because it's, it, it's an incredibly large, large project. So they're looking at, um, maybe a phase project or multiple images versus one complete image. So, and if anyone else would like to be a part of that project, um, please let me know. Okay. Um, very, very preliminary at this point. Kathy, did the Department of Transportation okay painting the that, well? They want to see more of the project. I mean, they want to really see what it is. They're, they're, they're open to exploring things, but okay. they would like, they want to see really what the neighborhood wants to do. Okay. I and mean, there's been everything from um, murals to um, write on the wall to attach to the wall to cut um, metal, um, laser cut imagery, etc. To blast to I mean they they're right now their their eyes are wide open. So before the um, it has to be obviously something that's safe and before they will give a firm approval they really do want to see some uh, something more more formulated for the project but I, I didn't i don't see hesitancy at this point i mean they actually wanted us to come up with the design for the south side of the wall the public art committee to work with them so i don't see a hesitancy on the north side and and you know the north side is the part that when they make those um concrete forms, it's the backside of the form, which is not the most aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Um, 111 West Broadway signage. Um, we're going to, um, that we'll have to table because we don't have anything yet from the business. Um, again, just some quick background. The, on the southwest corner of Broadway and Madison, um, it used to be where Allegra Printing was right on that corner. Now there's a variety of businesses that move in and out of that building. But the on that north wall where Hadley Ferguson's series of historic Missoula paintings are, um, the owner of that building gave the Public Art Committee and the City of Missoula a perpetual easement on that wall for public art. And so one of the things that the committee in the past has taken great care of is to find that balance between business signage because there's a couple of doors that open onto Broadway. Um, so the balance between that and um, impacts on the existing public art there. So there is a new business going in and they are looking at, re in fact, the old awnings down, they wanna replace the awning and also put a perpendicular sign coming out from the wall. So we as the public art committee get to approve that design. Um, and then it goes to design review. And in the past, I mean, no, we have never said, no, you can't do any signage. We just don't want it. To, um, in the past, the committee has made the determination that it can't impact or hinder the art in any way, shape or form. So, but there are good ways to do it. So that'll probably be, that'll be on our agenda for next month. Um, public art guide. Um, I mentioned last month that the Missoulian is wants to do it again, which is exciting. Um, so they are putting together the pricing for the ads in the guide. Um, and there will be, um, you know, pretty much, I don't think the, the format will be changed as far as now um, four and a quarter by 11 um, ish. Um, we'll be, they'll be printing 5,000 of them, distributing them around Missoula, Western Montana, and um, depending, and then also a limited 
distribution in the Missoulian. They won't be able to go to all their subscribers because um, they will want to have some for the advertisers and also then to be distributed at the very tourism spots. And, and for those of you, that's um, this guide. This was, um, this by the way, is our 15th year of doing this. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, it still is the most picked up brochure at the airport and some other places. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, I think that's really, that seems like a really great resource. Um, have you guys ever had a conversation about um, like a, a opportunity for to engage uh, children in this, um, like a as a, like almost like a treasure hunt or a, like you know a checkoff guide or stamps? I don't know how you do stamps, but um, <laughs> something just something to like try to get you know um, families out, but have some interest with the youth. Um, and basically implant the significance and importance of public art. I think that's a wonderful idea. And I think we should work on that for this one. And it would be a great thing for the 15th. Like a, <laughs> it could be really like, cool. Like a tear we, out page almost, like a tear out scavenger mm -hmm. hunt or something. Yeah. yeah. You know, we did that when I was in the museum world at the historical museum. We did that with buildings downtown and all sorts of statues. And it was great fun. Um, and we got tons and tons of response. We did um, work with the um, superintendent of schools and da da da. I know, I think that's a great idea. Let's work on that as an addition to this because we truly, there is some flex space in the guide. Um, Greg, you want to help with it? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. You could be fun. Like you could have, like, you could have, I don't know, this is just spitballing, but you know, just silhouettes of things. Mm -hmm. You have a map, but then you have silhouettes and you have to figure out which which things might be that piece of art or, you know, just almost like a game, but a, a way to um, to make it exciting to yeah. explore, discover and connect. Right. Right. And there are some new pieces, you know, the sign at the Pavarello Center. Well, we're going to try and get in this year. There is the, there are the um, portraits at on um, Higgins and I'm calling it the donut. Um, building where they, the donuts and the popcorn are. Um, if, and there's a couple other pieces, but if anybody sees artwork that we've missed or new since last year, the last guide, please let us know because we do everything we can to get it in there. One of the things we know our space is dictated as one can imagine by the amount of advertising sold. Um, so our city of Missoula public art is in there all the time, but we have um, traded out other public art pieces, if, if you will, just for spatial reasons. Um, James, we have to remember to put in the third and Myrtle project, because if we have upcoming projects, um, that's a good thing. And Stoney, I owe you an apology. And it was just because it just came into my head um, about the pack live. So um, I apparently printed the old agenda versus the new agenda with you on it. Um, but maybe we can talk about that next. But you know, Pack Live has we've featured that because Sony has worked so hard on doing performance art during the summers in Missoula. So different things like that. So yeah, if we can think of anything that we want added, let's make sure we get it in there. Um, Sony, I, again, I apologize. Do you want to talk about your Pack Live idea? Oh, oh, sure. Um, hi, guys. I'm finally stationed eating a banana here. Um, uh, so, okay, Pack Live started. Um, the idea of it was in 2019 and then COVID hit. Um, is that the right timing? So it, uh -huh. it is. So we did kind of a pilot year of it. Essentially, it was the idea of um, stimulating, supporting some uh, performative-based, time-based, ephemeral works uh, to participate during the downtown, um, uh, what do you call it? First Friday, that thing First that we Friday. haven't had in so long. Um, and so, so the first year we had, we had some stilt walkers that walked downtown. We had a dancer and musician. We had, um, uh, some other musicians set up. Um, we had some weather stuff that came up, but 
but we liked the intention of it and had uh, explored. We were planning on doing it full force in 2020. Obviously, that didn't happen. And so now we're kind of back to the drawing board of, uh, you know, how do we consider it for 2021? Do we? A thought that I had with it um, was possibly partnering. I mean, one of the challenges we have as a committee is just our capacity um, and our time availability. Uh, Paisley is our wonderful staff person, and she does a great job. And I think her time is pretty much used up most of the time. Um, and so I think that when when you're lean in capacity, partnerships in particular are a great way to go and build off the strengths um, of what other people are working with. So I was thinking a little bit about um, working, considering working together with Mama, um, if we had a budget for it. I mean, I think that's the main thing. We have to really look at the monies that we have and how do we, you know, where should they go? Um, but Mama, uh, which stands for Missoula Area Music association or something have been doing pretty good job of um uh uh stimulating supporting local musicians they did a cool um uh live music sessions along the uh clark fork river trail um and so i thought about reaching out to them and maybe exploring what they already have on the calendar, what they're thinking about for this year. And maybe there's just a way to partner and we sponsor a couple of artists steering that um, given that things are really still up in the air with COVID. It does seem like things will open up more, but um, kind of wanted to touch base with you guys first and see what your thoughts were. Um, I, and Oh, good. I mean, I'm open. Um, what we paid, and Sony, correct me. We pay. We set aside two hundred dollars a month. Was it, or was it six hundred dollars a month? Two hundred dollars an artist. That's right. I think that's. I think that's right, Kathy. Two hundred artists, six hundred a month. Yes. So six hundred dollars for, for a month. three months. I think. Yeah. Um, to pay yeah. artists, and then we tried to have three three artist groups or artists perform on those first mm -hmm. yep yep exactly it, it was and it may have been for four months it may have been that fifteen hundred dollar target range yeah we can go back and look two years but it was a very well yeah. project yeah and it was it was our four-way foray again into doing something ephemeral and transient and not something that's going to be with us forever yeah. but that um, really great blend. So, yeah, I think partnership personally, I think, you know, to help with all of us. And again, we are how many members, um, partnerships are always great. Um, yeah. Who, where, who did you speak to, to get most of the artists the first year? Um, there was an organization. In the well, so I was working with Naomi with Lake Bottom Sound, and yes. I was working with SJ over at Mask, and she connected Mask. us with the circus performers. Yeah. Yes, Mask is who I was thinking of. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm happy to reach out to Mama and see what they have going. And during our next, I might, I think I may not be in town for our next meeting, but I, if I learn, I will pass it on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we could just go from there. Yeah. You and, know, and we could, this if was we one push, of those oh, go ahead. Great, oh, I was just going to say, this is one of those great projects too, where um, I love, you know, there are things that we do once and we have a work of art. There are things, then we have those projects that we repeat and we have works of art, but it's just nice to have something once again, that becomes tradition for us to do in, Again, my opinion, yeah. um, but people look forward to it and it, it helps us make our mark in Missoula that um, we do exist and different ways that people see. Yeah. It. yeah. It's satisfying to put money directly in artist hands too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So are we all good with Sony pursuing this still for this, for this next meeting or the following meeting? Hopefully we'll be able to have first Fridays person this summer. 
Creamy. Thanks, Tony. I appreciate it. And again, my apologies. I printed Thanks, the good. old agenda. Um, no worries. So um, are there any announcements, new, any news, anything that we want to let everyone know, uh, upcoming events, general information? This isn't really art related, but it is Kirsten's birthday today. So if you get a chance to email her. I did, yes. That's why Kirsten isn't with us. She asked me if she could not do our meeting and I said, absolutely. Everybody deserves their birthday off. Um, you know, this was, um, and we, we kind of got away from this for a while, but one of the things that we used this time for too was if anybody had done any traveling and saw some great public art projects, <laughs> we'd say, hey, I was just in so-and-so and they did this da-da-da-da-da, um, just as an idea sharing too. So um, we could also use this part of the meeting for that. But. Um, I have one update. Um, so, uh, geez, when was that? Um, like. 2019, um, Greg Martin reached out to us about um, wanting to do a mural with um, the church that was here in Missoula. Um, it was, oh no, I can't remember the name of the church. Um, it was the like African American church. Um, and uh, let me actually just go look at the email because Oh, that makes sense. Um, St. Paul AME Church. Yes, that one. Um, and so he was actually able to secure funding for that. Um, and um, wow, there's so many. Um, oh, Greg is here. Oh, is he? Greg, are you here? Oh, maybe. Okay, oh. awesome. Maybe he can talk. Um, okay, help me figure this out. Star nine. Can you Greg, hear me? Greg, I unmuted you. You should be able to speak. And you're unmuted. Thanks, Greg. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, actually, uh, that's really, we haven't, we've been sort of dormant for a while um, on this project. Uh, and so we don't have anything. We're just starting, because I was able to get funding, I think we're going to start uh, talking about it more. Um, and I'm meeting with Jamar Galbraith and Miha, who is in our in uh, Missoula's uh, idea racial idea uh, organization. Um, and but uh, I, I have what looks to be like about, about ten to twenty thousand dollars, and um, not knowing <laughs> very much about this process was uh, was had reached out to Courtney and just asked, you know, uh, you know what what. How, is that an inadequate amount of funding? Is that, uh, you know, what could we do with that? You know, um, just some sort of ideas of what, you know, what these things tend to cost. Um, and, you know, we're looking hopefully for exterior wall of a building um, in a, you know, hopefully decently high traffic area. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. I'm still, we're still very early on in this. Greg, keep us posted. Um, if and if you would like to be on the agenda next month, you're welcome um, to lead off our meetings. You wouldn't have to sit through everything and sure. give us an update on the project if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit more with uh, with Jamar and and some other people, just uh, you know, getting ideas and and how we're going to go about this because I I still think we there's a you know location. And artist selection is something we, we don't have a <laughs> we don't have a clue. I, I know that there's you know it's it's sort of a, a difficult situation in terms of artists because um, for us I for me in, in, and I talked with this with uh, people from Montrep um, and Judy Howman um, gave me the name of uh, of a black artist in California um, and I know that the, you know we want to. <laughs> Obviously, we'd like to give, be able to do it for an, a local artist, but we don't have, really don't have black muralists here. Uh -huh. This history really speaks to the black experience in, in the West, um, well, in the country in general. And um, so that's kind of one of the things we're just grappling with, things like that. And I, I don't have any, <laughs> anything 
new on that, but I was kind of looking to see if, you know, is, if, is 10 to $20,000 a, a reasonable budget for a, a, a project like this? Um, depending on the size of the wall. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, there was a time when, you know, we would like, I, we didn't do anything other, you know, for less than 15 and um, on murals just because of the efforts. We, for Hadley, hers was a $30,000 project, if I'm remembering correctly. Okay. Um, but to shoot for that, you know, I would say shoot for 20 and okay. um, try and get as close as you can. Okay. Particularly if the artist is going to supply all the materials. But again, if the wall is larger than that, um, I mean, uh, larger than that, really, he, you know, depending on where you put it, I guess that that's going to also dictate the award. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of just wanting to know, because that's what I'm able to set aside for this. I mean, obviously, we could also try to reach out for more fundraising, but I, I, mm -hmm. do, I don't know what these things typically cost. <laughs> this is really new, new territory for me. Um, I would shoot for at least 15 to 20. Okay. That would be Thank my you. opinion. Um, I, if anyone else has any, um, you know, we, I'm thinking of the, the monies that we've spent in the past, excluding the traffic signal boxes and the neighborhood grants, because those, I mean, those are lower um, level of payment projects. This is right. a pretty hefty one. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it's just, we still have to talk about just, you know, do we want to be a full, you know, side of a building or maybe just a smaller section, some, you know, mm -hmm. those are things that we're still. How do you all, how do you all feel about the money amount, Dennis, or, I mean, if, 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 does that seem legitimate to you? Not, I mean, it's hard when we don't know the exact size. Right. Anyone? Yeah, I think that's legitimate, 15 to 20, mm -hmm. okay. would, depending on how long it takes, and the size of it and everything. Well, Greg, please, please come to our next meeting if you want. Okay. Do you have Paisley's email address? Um, um, if, I have Danny's. Yeah, or Danny, and Danny can put you in touch with Paisley and we can get you on the agenda. Okay, yeah, I, I hopefully I'm more, you know, from just talking you know, I have more information that I could give a, a, a sort of a coaching presentation or at least some sort of more background on this. Good. For people that aren't aware of it. Perfect. Sorry to just put you on the spot. Um, also, just like one more thing I would put, like just consider um, if, you know, they're coming out of state, like are you going to pay for their travel? And right. Like, for I, their lodging? Exactly. Um, There's a like, lot of those things. A lot of uh, additional cost. So. Right. Yep. Yeah, I, it has crossed my mind, and I, honestly, I don't, I don't know. It's, it, you know, I just would like collaboration on that with with as many. Boys. And that, and that we can help with Greg. We've been involved in all of that, where we brought in artists and da 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 da. So, yeah. you know, all we have a hard stop at five thirty, and Greg, I don't mean to cut you off. No, you're fine. That's fine. Thanks. Um, so are we all? Um, anyone have anything to say in like two seconds? Otherwise, thank you, thank you, thank you for participating today. Greg, thank you for coming. Um, yeah, thank you. And Greg and James will talk. And Heidi, thanks. Anything? Bye. Thanks. thanks all. <coughs> Meeting is adjourned. <laughs> thanks, Marty. <laughs>